So if somebody else give me a behavior that's well, when they When they say they're going to do something, they give them the task to do, and then either they, and, and there's a timeline, and they don't need it. I mean, I yeah. That's very frustrating. And then when you can't get information as to why it's not going to be met or what, that sounds more like the D thing. Right? Yeah. I just get really frustrated. Well, I'm yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, let me just look at this. Yeah. You see, you, you, you got three bars above the line here. You've got two here. I mess. No, I don't know that I can exactly tell you where the frustration is coming from, but I can tell you who is going to frustrate you the most. Well, the style, not an individual. Right. I tell you the Well, honestly, when I when I when I look at when I look at your at your chart here, your natural style is going to be the eyes and the S's. And let me tell you why. Um, Okay, why would an S not give, deliver what they said they were going to deliver? It goes back into the psychology sometimes of S's. If, if you're an S and I ask you to do something and I say, I, I, I really have a problem and I, I need some help, could you do this for me? What, if, what, what is the natural inclination of an S? Yes. To do it. Yeah. What if you're really busy? What if you're over your head and you don't even know if you can get your stuff done? Oh, you say, well, I'd, I'd okay. like to do that. I'll try. Yeah, I'll try. I'll try. Yeah. Okay, now think about it. If you are taking it as a commitment, precise commitment that you're going to get it done at that point, and they're taking it as, well, I want to help you, I'll try. There's a maybe a different view. And even at the time that they accept it, they may feel like, yeah, uh, I'm going to do my best. But then what happens is right after that, somebody else comes. Could you do this? Oh, yeah. Can you do this? Oh, yeah. Right? But the day before your project is due, somebody else says, can you do this? Oh, yeah. And they're trying to juggle it all. And then when they don't deliver it to you, you're frustrated. <laughs> but and, and, well, it's hard, you know, because you take on so much stuff and, and it's like impossible. And, and S's are not always very good at saying, I can't get that done. They want to help. And, the, and the juggling is, is an interesting thing because S's are, are um, by nature, much better if they can work on one thing and get that one thing done, and then work on another thing and get that thing done. Multitasking is a learned behavior for S's. And by multitasking, I mean just lots and lots of conflicting priorities, chaos, all kinds of things, yet keeping it all on schedule. If an S is good at that, they've had to learn it. That's not a natural thing. And so then if you add that to the tendency to say yes to everybody, then it often causes them not to meet their commitments. And, and often they're, it's weighing heavily on them. They're frustrated because they want to please everybody. But then you can't please everybody. Okay, and the reason I's have a problem with it is just because of the structure. And, and um, you know, if anybody's going to be late, it's going to be an I, you know, those kinds of things. Why? Because they're not, they don't have that structured approach that a C would have, for sure. And um, once again, uh, they also uh, want to help. Both the C's, or both the I's and the S's have the same thing. They want to take it on. Sure, I'll help you. Sure, I'd love to help you. Sure, I'd love to help you. And then sometimes, because um, they don't have the scheduled timeline, project management, structured view of things, they are overly optimistic about how much they can get done. And, and there's an optimism about eyes. They're the most optimistic people, and so that optimism sometimes enters into what they think they might be able to accomplish, and then when it comes down to it, they don't mean to not get it done, but it doesn't get done. And those task-oriented people are very much like, you said you were going to get it done, how come you didn't get it done? And why are you making excuses and, and that kind of thing? And um, so one of the challenges of both S's and I's is at the time somebody asks you to do something to really consider, can I really do this or not? Yes, I try, but make it really clear to them that I may not be able to get this done because this is, but you want to please. And the other thing for S's and I's is to, to be better at estimating. Now, 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 the only people that are really good at estimating generally are the C's. And, and what I mean by that is the C's 
before they give a commitment, they usually think about it very carefully, think about everything that has to be done very precise and so forth, and they won't give a commitment unless they're absolutely sure. So because they do that, they demand that from other people. So even though I wouldn't say that you're a C, what you're expressing is a frustration that C's, and I say for myself, often have of other people is the commitment levels. Why don't we do it? So then the question is, when people don't make their commitments, they make commitments and they don't do it, what do you do? You have three choices. When we get back to these three choices, often it's, it's I need to talk to this person about commitments because it happens over and over and they're on my team. And they say they're going to do it and then I depend on them. And, and if you want to adjust to it, you just realize I can't depend on this person. But often what kind of happens then is your respect level goes down for them. And that's a dangerous thing to have happen on a team. So sometimes you need to talk to them about their commitments. And one of the ways that teams become better teams is because we do talk to each other. Because if I don't keep my commitments, somebody needs to talk to me in a way that I can relate to. It would be good for me to work on being better at keeping my commitments. And, and the thing is, when you have all the, uh, the um, styles represented, everybody here can teach everybody else. And everybody here can learn from everybody else. And, and if we can be humble enough, we can learn from each other. And if we can be bold enough but sensitive enough not to blow people away, we can also confront and teach and, and, and help the others on our team to, to, to raise the bar and to become better at, you know, at some of the things that we're doing, be better team members and so forth. So um, people who are really sticklers for the, the commitments and so forth, they've got to have some give and take, but they can also be great teachers as well. You know, because I think you can turn any situation into a successful one if there's enough sensitivity and respect and give and take, and learning and humility and all of that kind of stuff. And, and uh, I think work should be a tremendous growing experience for everybody. And in the growing experience, we become better teams and we're better at getting the job done. I'm task-oriented enough to care about the job that's getting done. That's important to me. But I'm also people-oriented enough to understand the tremendous value of the people equation and the learning and the process that we get by being very different yet working together and working through these, these differences. DISC has been a very helpful thing for me because um, it's helped me in a lot of ways to understand my own shortcomings and also to appreciate other people and to grow in the areas where I'm deficient. And um, that's what I'm hoping that you can all get from some of this for yourself, is to see maybe some areas where you could grow, areas of your own deficiency where somebody else on your team or even somebody that you live with has what you don't have and to start looking at them as a mentor.